a little more complicated one dealing with factorials. Again, just testing our knowledge and understanding of factorials. But same kind of concept. In this case, we're solving the equation. And so we stop and we think, let's try and cancel out the factorials if we can. So which is the bigger out of these two factorials? Well, the n plus 4. It's definitely going to be bigger than n plus 2. So if we break down the n plus 4 a bit, maybe we can match it up with the n plus 2 factorial on the bottom and see if we can cancel. So let's give that a try. So on the top, we could say n plus 4, and then one less, n plus 3. In other words, definition of a factorial, just taking one off it, and then n plus 2, and we stop there. And we say, well, let's keep the factorial at that point because it will continue on from there. And on the bottom, n plus 2, and given that we were smart and we broke it down until those two matched, we can cancel those out. And so that was kind of our first goal was to be able to remove the factorials out of here. Now, let's just remind ourselves we have the 6 there still. So, step 1, cleared out the factorials. Excellent. On to step 2. We still have to solve this, but now we can kind of change our, our way of thinking and forget about factorials for a minute here and just focus on solving. So, we have n plus 4, n plus 3 equals 6. And if we had, we think back to uh, our solving and dealing with trinomials and stuff like that, and we think if we had a zero on the right-hand side, then we could say anything times zero is zero, and so we could, our answer would be negative four and negative three as two possible answers. But we have a six there, so that's not going to work. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to distribute this out and reorganize it and try and get that zero on the right-hand side ourselves. So let's start by distributing this. n times n is n squared. n times 3 is 3n. 4 times n is 4n. And 4 times 3 is 12. And we still have a 6 on the right-hand side there. And we'll just divide our work a little bit because we have a bit more to do. So now let's bring this up, n squared, and we can bring the 3 and the 4n together. So we have 7n and our 12 and our 6. So remember we mentioned earlier that, you know, remembering back, we, we want a 0 on the right-hand side here. We're solving, and remember our methods for solving. One of them was we try and isolate the variable. That works excellent in a lot of cases, but not in this case. We've got the n squared in the n, so that's not going to work out very nicely here. So uh, what if we get the 0 on the right-hand side as our first step? So let's get rid of that 6 on the right-hand side. And we're left with n squared plus 7n. And 12 minus 6 is 6. And 6 minus 6 is 0. So good. We've accomplished that. We have our 0 on the right-hand side. And we think back, and when we were solving and it involved trinomials like this, what we did was we factored. And we get ourselves into a situation here where two things multiplied equals 0. So remember, we put the n's at the front, and we stop and we think, okay, what are two numbers that we multiply in order to get 6. And we add in order to get 7. So a little bit of thinking there, and we think, oh, 6 and 1. 6 times 1 gives us 6, and 6 plus 1 gives us 7. So there's our factored form. So now we can say, ah, so in order to make this true, we just have to make either one of these factors equal to 0. So what would make the first factor 0? Well, if n was minus 6. Minus 6 plus 6 is 0. What would make the second factor 0? Minus 1. So negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So yes, there's two possible answers here. So that's looking pretty good so far. 
But we do have to stop and say, okay, by definition, uh, factorial has to be a positive number. It has to be a natural number, remember. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go back and just double check our answers here. So if we were to plug minus 6 into that equation that we started off with, we'd have minus 6 plus 4 on the top, and that would give us negative 2, negative 2 factorial. That is a problem. We don't f do a factorial of a negative number. So we know right away that this negative 6 is not a real answer here. We worked it through and it looked like a good answer, but when we double check with our rules and our original equation, we see that no, in fact, that one doesn't work out. So let's check out the negative 1. If we plug negative 1 into our original 1, well, let's just plug it in and see. So negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So we're left with 3 factorial on the top and negative 1 plus 2 on the bottom, so that would leave us with 1 factorial on the bottom. And let's think. 3 factorial, 3 times 2 times 1 is 6, and 1 factorial is just 1, and our answer is 6. So sure enough, that worked out perfectly fine, so that does verify that our negative 1 is a good solution.